So here's my chance to kind of talk to everyone of the audience and say, all right, you know, if we're working in a Revit or AutoCAD world, right? Uh, let's talk about, first of all, let's go back a few years, right? Way back when on working on a set of construction documents out in the field, in my office, I always had a three ring binder with details. And I would either go through and put those PDFs and sticky them. I remember those uh, stickies and put it onto my set of drawings. I'm just showing my age. Or maybe I had a set of red lines that I had put on a set of drawings, old fashioned way, and did electronic, I mean, did it manually, right? And then my team would hit it with a highlighter, right? I know everyone on the call has done both of those, at least the second one. So my question I would like to pose to my two experts, Robert and Richard, is if we're doing this electronically and using Revit, for example, which you know is the industry standard, um, how do we go about and take advantage of an application like Bluebeam, which is, you know, my favorite, of course, and how do we do our markups and pick them up in Revit, right? So let's kind of talk about that as an existing scenario. A lot of people use Revit. They work from home. They just have one monitor, just like myself. And how do we go through and pick up those red lines? Well, we have to have those two applications opened up and you go back and forth, back and forth. And I got to tell you, if you're like me and I, I redline all over my drawings, um, my team might miss a few. And I don't know if they've picked them up, even though they might have hit it with a highlighter digitally or not. So I want to showcase Robert uh, and Markup X Pro to look at an incredible game-changing workflow on picking up red lines easily and 100% where you know that those red lines have either been picked up or not. And then afterwards, we're going to do a walkthrough of how to take an ordinary Revit file uh, and bring in a Word document, an Excel document, and a PDF document. And you're ready for it? Make it live. What? I didn't even know that was possible. So. I'm going to hand that off to Richard, but without further ado, Robert, why don't you take it away and show us everything that we wanted to know about Markup X Pro and picking up red lines the better way. All right, great. Well, thank you. This is going to be a very short little demo. Even if I tried to extend it, it wouldn't last more than 15 minutes. So very short little PowerPoint. It's called Markups Pro. Uh, our little tagline, it's an integrated markup experience combined with a powerful design and layout engine. All right. Um, so what it is, it's an add-on to Autodesk software, any Revit-based or AutoCAD-based products. So Civil 3D, Plant 3D, Plain AutoCAD. Basically, what we want to try to do with this software is we want to keep the staff in the products they're most proficient proficient in. So if you're a Revit user, we want to keep you in Revit, not having you jump over to Bluebeam and back and forth. What we do is we bring the markups directly into um, the design software from a PDF. So customers are telling us they're completing markups one to three minutes faster using this method. We also want to make sure you address all your markups. We know it's a liability issue when things are missed and it goes out to for construction. And then the last thing there is for the Revit users, we can place families directly into Revit from a PDF. Uh, this enables non-Revit users to utilize the design elements. So without further ado, I'm going to get into a very short little demo here. So I'm bringing up Revit here. So I've got a Revit model. This is just a standard Revit model. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to create a PDF here. So we're just going to come up here. We're going to go to export. I'm going to go to PDF. And I like to use this method if you don't have the Bluebeam method on there is because when I do this, it'll actually export out the sheet name. And that's really critical for what I actually need. So you absolutely need to have the sheet names in the PDF. That's how we know where to place these. So I can just say, let's just do those two. Um, where do I want to put this? I'm just going to call this one, let's call it June um, 2024. I'm going to throw it on my desktop. This method also picks up your sheet size. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and go export. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to go over here and jump into Bluebeam. I'm going to come back to this one in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into the one I just created there. There it is, June. Okay. 
So there it is, okay? And why I wanted to point this out is that you'll see here in my thumbnails, it actually shows me the sheet name, okay? So that's very, very critical for our software. Um, all you have to do is go in, just any markup, you know, just like you would normally do a markup, no problem. You can testing however you want. You can go into your other sheets. You can throw in all sorts of markups, okay? Uh, we even have the ability, um, if you use tool chests, to place items in the model from here. So I can create this. Now, the thing we actually do here is if I just click on this one here real quick, if I go into the properties of that item, we actually can put in a custom name in here, okay? So you can put in your family name and type into this location, all right? So I'm not gonna do that for this example here, okay? Pretty straightforward, I'd turn around and save this Marco, okay? Save that PDF. Now, if we jump back into Revit here, what we actually have is a ribbon, uh, markups, and all I do is one icon here, just go Navigator, pulls this up. All you end up doing is you're gonna load a PDF. Now I'm gonna load one that I've already done because it's got a lot more markups in it just to show you, but I'm gonna say grab this one and I'm gonna go open and you can see it just loaded all those markups and it went really quick in here, but there was 45 markups in there. This is a multi-sheet um, uh, PDF. So this is what's called our list view. It's pretty simple. If you just click on any one of them, it automatically loads the sheet, zooms to the location, and displays the markup right there in the model. Wait, that is wait, a, a, wait <laughs> a minute. Hold the presses, folks. Wait. All right. Now, listen. I know this is going to be like, this is a new set of Ginsu knives or something, but the typical way that I would do this, and I'm sure everyone else on the call, right? You open up your blue beam, you run it in the background, you're like, oh, crap, what sheet number am I on? And then I go into Revit and look for that sheet. If you look carefully, I mean, this he went over this really quickly, but did you guys see how fast it went through and loaded all the sheets in the navigator on the right-hand side? And I'm able to go through, right, thank you, Andrew. Andrew, he's catching on. He's, you're a smart pup. So when he clicks on that, it goes right to the sheet. So I got to tell you, that is such a, a time saver, right? Um, I had a, a CEO I was talking to just on a side note. Uh, he was talking to me, he says, you know, Rick, I love the fact that, you know, sometimes salespeople, and I'm not sales, I'm a tech guy. And they say, you know, it's all, it makes it more efficient and feels good. And you're a happier person. The, the CEO said, that's all bullshit. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> Baloney. It's all dollars and cents when it comes down to it. And the CEO says, if I can shave time off of my employees doing a function that they do repetitively, repetitively throughout the day, they're more billable. They're getting more work done. So it's dollars and cents. What it boils down to is this is a workflow that just uh, saves time and puts more money into uh, your pocket, which means you get to leave at five o'clock, maybe. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Robert, back to you. Yeah, no, that's great. And like I said, you know, every customer is telling us they're saving between one and three minutes. I mean, I, I don't even have to do the ROI for you. If you if you think on the lowest end, if you have save a minute per markup, uh, we got customers that are having over 8,000 markups per project. Mm. So you can do the math yourselves. I mean, we don't even need to build an ROI calculator. Um, so in this list view, basically any markup you click on, it just quickly jumps to that and displays it right to your model. We don't add anything to your model. These are unselectable. You don't print them. They don't print. Um, they're just a temporary graphics that, that's in there. Uh, we also have the ability, if you wanted to, you could say, hey, can you show me all the markups at one time on my sheet? So these are all the wow. different markups. What I've done there is I've filtered out all those markups in there. Um, so that's the list mode. If you double click on any markup, it takes you into what's called our edit mode. Edit mode shows you the PDF. So that is the PDF and you'll see there's other markups in there. All we're doing is taking you right to the markup you're currently on. We display it. If you don't want to see it, you can absolutely turn that off and just show the, the PDF over here. It's completely up to you. But the idea behind it is you address the markup. We don't do anything to help you fix it. But when you're done, what we actually want you to do, I'm just going to go into my settings in here. You can notice I've got completed unchecked, so we can add custom statuses and everything. But what I want to do here is if I just go in here and say, yep, I've fixed this, I'm going to go as completed. It automatically jumps to the next one, and you'll notice the numbers going down. 
This will assure you you're addressing every single markup. I add the dimension, I go complete it, and so on and so forth. And if I come in here, why it's, that number's gone down is because I did turn off that filtering. I don't want to see anything that's completed, but if I turn that back on, you'll actually see we've changed the colors here, letting you know they're completed. So that's the main idea behind the product. But if you come on down here, you'll start seeing these icons in here. We realized early on, once we started reading the data out of this PDF and stuff, that we got customers that are using tool chests and placing doors and windows and walls and stuff like that, drawing these in the PDF and telling their staff, hey, I want a wall here, I want a chair there. And so whenever you see an icon like that, that lets you know that that's something you can place into the model. So I'm going to just turn off the regular markups. These are all the ones I can place into the model. So you can see in here, you got a bed, you got a table. If I come on down here, there's a chair. There's the chair there. I can turn it on and off. But if I wanted to, I can just click on this and I'll just place that chair directly in the model. Let's go to this one. Same exact icon, just rotated there. I go click on it and it just placed that chair. If I look at this, this just says it's a polyline. But if I hover over it, you'll actually see that it says it's a basic wall interior. I click on that and it'll actually place Whoa. that wall. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. I got to tell you, Robert, I, I'm not kidding. So this is a workflow that I saw someone do and I was wondering how they did it. So Here's uh, it's a big, huge multinational company with three letters. I'm not going to say the name of the company and uh, but you can kind of guess which one it is. It's not ABC. They were drawing everything sketch to scale in Bluebeam review because you can sketch to scale line work right as a design and then using some magic to generate walls from that line work. And now I know how it was done. Yeah, it's as that simple. We're working on entire systems. So any companies that are out there doing HVAC or electrical systems and stuff like that, you'll be able to draw that in a PDF and just say, hey, it's, a, you know, this HVAC system, this is the size and it'll automatically place the, all the fittings and everything in there for you. So that's what we're currently working on. But that's markups in a nutshell. Very quick and easy. I love quick and easy. Uh, I'll tell you. That's awesome. 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 Well, folks, you know, if you have any questions for Robert, uh, please feel free in the chat area, ask away. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to bore everyone and this isn't boring whatsoever. I got to tell you, but I'd like to hand the stage over to my friend Richard because we share the same name, you know, and haircut, right? Right. Uh, well, you know, I was going to make a comment that we're going to rename Misty to Regina. Because we have Robert, we have Rick, we have Richard. We need a, a, a we female need, name, so we're going to be we like need Regina. An R. <laughs> Maybe like we'll take Rock suggestions. Right? <laughs> Let's take suggestions from the audience. You know, what should Misty, you know, <laughs> change her name legally, and uh, we'll just take a vote. And you know, I Misty love that. Have to change it. But uh, that was awesome, Robert. I got to tell you. Um, and so, Richard, now, you know, the, again, so here's kind of like my thought, just to kind of recap. I have a real set of drawings, right? I, I showed how I have a physical set in using sticky notes or sticky backs way back when. Um, how do I do that electronically in Revit? So take it away, uh, Richard. All right. Thanks, Rick. Well, my name is Richard Taylor with uh, Great Tech. And actually, ID8 software has now been part of Great Tech for just a couple months. Uh, and we have a whole uh, solution line of products that are add-ons to Revit. So one of those is ID8 Sticky. And ID8 Sticky allows you to live link Excel, Word, and PDF data into your Revit project and keep it up to date. Um, and so... Wait, is, is live linking available now in Revit? On on a Word file or Excel not on, or not PDF? on Word, and actually um, for Revit 2022 and forward for PDF, but we're actually supporting previous versions of Revit as well. Awesome. Um, so if you happen to be on Revit 2020 or Revit 2021, you can use ID8 Sticky. Actually, we go back to I believe Revit 2015. Uh, for ID8 Sticky. Not that you're using that at the moment. No, but, who uh, would be? We, right? we do have previous versions. And again, like I said, it's it's linking that in and it's keeping it up to date. And we have a couple different methods. 
One is you're able to have it as a schedule, a real schedule in Revit. Uh, we're using a schedule header to display the information. And the other uh, way is we call it sticky images, where you're linking in the Word or the PDF or the Excel document as an image. So I thought I'd just show this real quickly. This is kind of the, I'm gonna go through this in just a second, but this is the main interface, allowing you to select the file, allowing you to browse to your source. And by the way, um, Rick asked me this earlier, we're supporting you know, files that are on your local computer. We're also supporting files that may be on the desktop connector through the Autodesk Construction Cloud or BIM 360. And I'll show you that we can, you know, we have an absolute path type, we have a relative path type, as well as a cloud type. So let's switch over here to Revit, just like Robert did. And so <clears throat> let's say I, you know, I've got a couple items on this sheet. I've called this sheet schedules and info, right? Um, so <clears throat> along the top here, I'll I'll go to back to architecture. Anytime you have an, an ID8 software application loaded, you'll go to the ID8 software ribbon tab. Imagine that. Uh, and we're going to call up ID8 Sticky. And so ID8 Sticky allows you, like I said, to link. The first thing I'm going to do is link in a, a, an Excel schedule, right? So I'm going to go over here and say create. And the source, well, where is this coming from? I have some samples here. We're going to come over to this lighting specification, right? Because again, we're saying that these could be, you know, really any non-BIM data, meaning that it could be specifications, it could be manufacturing information, it could be uh, details. As you know, uh, Rick mentioned, <clears throat> we're going to show some examples of PDF that are a lot of, you know, details, specific details that are sticky back. Hence, that's where the name came from. Well, so I'm going to open this up, and I can give it any name I want. Uh, for instance, I might say that this is my, uh, and I'm going to say here. A lighting schedule, so I can find it uh, easily within the uh, schedule. So I'll say lighting schedule. So give it any name you want. Um, notice that I can have uh, the print area. I can also pick different worksheets within Excel. So in this case, there are different product lines, right? Uh, from Phillips Chloride all the way to Stone Co. So I want to pick the Phillips Lightelier. And so I call it the A lighting schedule, I'll say OK. And then that is now linked and uh, <clears throat> placed on the um, the sheet. OK, so if we come over here, that's why I was showing the, the schedules to the project browser. And let's look at, there it is, a lighting schedule. So it actually shows up as a schedule. If I double click, it's, <clears throat> it is a real schedule that I can modify. However, I'm going to say Phillips Lightelier for Boston, because that's where I'm located. Notice that it actually says, hey, you know what? This um, link that you created was actually done with ID8 Sticky. And in fact, it would be better to, to edit the source document. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so <clears throat> what we're going to do here is cancel this dialog. Uh, we're going to come back up to Sticky. We're going to look at that A-Lighting schedule. And notice it says, you know, I've got open file. This is actually now opening the source document. We're going to go over to um, the Lightelier. And here is where we're going to say Phillips Lightelier, and we'll give Regina some love for Atlanta. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, so I'm going to make a, a change. Whoops, I got to spell Atlanta right. Atlanta. There you go. Yeah, it takes me a while. And now I'm going to change uh, maybe a color here just to show you. And and then I'm also going to do something here, like maybe I don't need this last Core Pro LED retrofit downlight. So I'm going to make a new, what we call an area. And that area is going to be called Taylor. Okay, so you see it highlights there. Save this, right? And I'm going to close this for right now. And I'm going to bring up Sticky again, just to show you that it says, ooh, it's out of date, the A lighting schedule because I made a change to it. Now, oh. there's a couple of different things. If I do this auto update, Rick. Wait, 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 wait. Oh okay. my goodness, I gotta say something. All right, as an avid Revit user, I've been using Revit uh, ever since it was like way back when with the dialog box on the side. Um, manage links, right? For those of you who are Revit users, you know that you can go to manage links and open up manage links to look at your images and things that are non-Revit data or even Revit data that are in there. But when you start to look at it, how do you know if it's out of date? 
this right here tells me exactly it's out of date. So anyway, I, I just this is this is a, a real big deal. Uh, yeah. And, anyway. and the auto update, what it does is um, when we first open up the project, like maybe at the beginning of the day, it's going to go through and look at all of the stickies that you have, both, you know, in this case, Excel or Word or PDF, and it's going to make sure that everything is up to date. Um, and in fact, you see here, because this was actually, you know, these are the different product lines, right? We have the Phillips Chloride, Daybright, Guardco, Hadco, Letalite. It knew that I made a change to that um, document. So therefore, all of them are out of date, okay? But in this case, what I'm going to do is just say update. And in fact, what I can do the same thing, even though there wasn't much of a, there isn't change to these other product lines, but I can also update those as well. Um, and so I can do a, sh a shift selects and decide that I want to update that information. So there you see, there's the Phillips Lidalier for Atlanta with the new information. Now I told you we made a special area that doesn't have this core pro LED downlight. So let's go back to sticky. All right, let's go take that A lighting schedule. We're gonna say update from, which gives me the ability to now pick a region. And the best region is the Taylor region, right? Everyone should know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I'm gonna select okay. And notice now that, that uh, because we've selected that particular area of cells, that core pro LED light is no longer there. Now, for the, the PDF fans, right, um, you know, I already brought one in here, which was this, like uh, Rick said, this, you know, sort of detail, right, this vent detail. But actually, let's do this. Um, let's come back over here to Sticky. Let's switch our tab, um, and we're going to say Create. And under the Samples directory, I'm going to look at uh, my uh, type. And here I've got all these PDFs, right? And so I actually created one here that was some door details, and it actually is a number of door details. So I'm going to select open. In this case, it's a PDF, and so I can specify the DPI, dots per inch. I can do whether it's color or grayscale or black and white. I can also make it transparent. Um, the transparency is nice if you've got maybe details on top of one another, or especially if you've got, let's say, Word documents or specification documents that where the margins are pretty um, um, wide then it's kind of nice that you can have that transparent and you can put those documents uh, much easier on the, the sheet. So I'm going to select OK. And then that basically is now linking that information in, right? And so here, I'm going to bring that down to my sheet, and I've got now that linked information. However, Rick, didn't you tell me that you made some changes to this? I did. I, I made some changes and because, you know, I like changing my mind <laughs> or actually, no, I reviewed the specifications. I looked at the details and I'm like, ah, wait a minute. One of these are not to be used. So in this scenario, I emailed Richard uh, an updated PDF of, uh, of this of, that I want him to use. All right. So that what you know, he gave me a new revision, right? So here in this case, here's the door details, right? So I'm going to say update from, and then I put those into Rev01, and here's the door details. So I'm just basically kind of pointing it to a different place that automatically is going to have the same insertion. Like you know, you saw me, I already moved it to the sheet and so forth. And now here's that. I'll call, for lack of a better word, I'll call it a markup, although it's not really a markup. It's a change just basically okay. saying, yeah, well, I guess it is, you know, that you you didn't use it. Now, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do another uh, sheet. And by the way, um, these I'm using sheets, but they could be like a drafting view or a plan view as well. Um, and I'm going to do a specification here. So let's come over here back to um, ID software, sticky. And uh, we're going to select on um, my, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do another PDF. Yeah. And we're going to do some specifications here. So I'm not going to do the Rev 1 yet. We're going to do this uh, specification. And in that case, notice that there are actually seven pages. I have the ability to say, well, I want all seven, one through seven. Or you could do one through two, a comma, you know, uh, we'll do that, comma, seven. So it's going to do the three pages. Again, you can specify the dots per inch, uh, whether it's color, transparent, select OK. And now that's going to link those documents in, 
just as we did before. But now we have those three pages. And I can grab that and decide that I want that to be up here, right? And again, let's come back over here to uh, Sticky. And I believe Rick gave me a um, an update on this one as well. So I did. I say, was a busy bee this morning. Yep. We're going to update from. And if you have, you know, like you saw me do with the um, the editing, meaning that if I've got like a PDF editing software, I can edit that and change it, right? But in this case, it's actually, you know, we're doing just a different revision. So in this case, here's the specifications. Again, I'm going to update that information, say OK. And, you know, I don't need to redo the pages or anything. And I believe, did you make a change? Where was, did I do the right one? Update. Or did I have that? Let's see. I thought that we did one here. Uh, oh, did I do the vent detail? Maybe that was it. Um, ah. that, that might, might have got the wrong one here. It was the specifications. So specifications here. Let's do this one. And say OK. And I'm still not seeing that. Was it? It was on page one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was page one. Oh, OK, well, you're making a uh, or I should say, I'm sure yeah. I am doing something either that or I goofed up. Let me see. Specifications PDF. It's current update from we're going. OK, it's telling me it's on the specifications. But I really, oh, I want to go Rev1. One. Exactly. I think maybe I didn't go down to that directly. I think oh, that's Okay, what it specifications. Was. Let's do that one. Okay, making sure that it's under the Rev1. Okay. There we go. There it see is. How many, see how many times it takes Richard to do it correctly. You know, two <laughs> or three go. times. <laughs> so now um, you know this is live. This isn't, uh, you know, something that's out of the, just. We 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 have human errors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so under sticky, I also wanted to show again that now everything is you know current, um, and that we have the ability, like I said, to have an absolute path, a relative path, or it could be coming from the um, you know the Autodesk Construction Cloud. You'll see this one here. This this revision list, column one and column two, is up on BIM three hundred and sixty, so it has the path type of cloud instead. Um, so this again, awesome. keeping that information up to date. And since um, Robert mentioned it, I thought I'd better go off script a little bit. Uh -oh. and, and because he mentioned um, that he likes for his markup X to come over here and do a export, all right, and export PDF. And I just wanted to mention that we also have the ability to schedule that. So, for instance, if you wanted to do uh, and have all of your sheets, like Robert mentioned, with all the names, you could actually use our ID8 automation to say, I want to create that. I would like to go and like do a publishing. You see here I have got combined or individual sheets. I want to do individual sheets because that's what he mentioned, right? And then I want to pick a file that may be on your local model or your Autodesk Construction Cloud, right? In this case, I'm going to do a local model, I'll say um, sample project here. And then the, I would give it uh, where I'm actually going to specify, in this case, PDF output. And I'll specify a sheet set called set one as an example. And then I would go ahead and just schedule that. And in fact, you know, if I save and run, it's going to run this in the background. And then I can schedule this to run at a particular time. And you can see that some of these that I have, once it's completed, I can schedule the task and you can see that I can say, well, you know what? I want this to run every night at two in the morning or, <clears throat> you know, whatever. And so you could create all your PDF sheets that are all sort of pre-populated to use with Markup X. So wow. I wasn't sure if, if Robert was aware of that. And I didn't know that either. Since he was talking, I thought, well, oh, this is something you could use one of our, another one of our applications. So again, ID8 automation as well as ID8 sticky are available from Gray Tech. You know, I just thought of a great, yeah, this is great. I haven't yet to see uh, this automate. And, and I just thought of some, a really good scenario. So typically, right at the end of the week, I'm like, all right, pens down at five o'clock. This is, we're going to be doing a 50% DD set. And I don't have to be there, right? I could just have this scheduled ahead of time. And then at you know, 10 minutes after close, when everyone's done working on their drawings, I could 
create a PDF set, have it on a schedule, put it in docs or on some cloud management software solution, and then pick it up at home and be able to review the documents at the, the comfort of my own happy hour place, right? I think so. Anyway, this is this is great. Oh, we might have had a little technical difficulty I there. I think so. I think so. Well, what? you know, it was perfect timing. I don't know, Richard, if you heard me, but either that or, or he was just like, wow, wait a minute. So scheduling, uh, scheduling to print at a different time uh, is, is really neat. Yeah, sorry about that. I, for some reason, it stopped. You were kind of breaking up and then it, it actually kicked me out. So I don't know if that happened to you or not. No, I'm not sure. But uh, I got to tell you guys, this is great. Um, you know, two, you know, when you start thinking about this, this is non BIM data, right? In both scenarios, using uh, Markup X or ID8 software solutions, both of them really center around non BIM data, where let's face it, you know, when we're working in Revit or AutoCAD, a lot of the things that we're using is non-BIM data, and to integrate those is painstaking. Um, so this is great. Well, that's. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the audience, Misty. All right, guys. So, yeah, if you've got any questions, go ahead and drop those in the live chat. That could be for Robert with Markup X. That could be for Rick for Bluebeam or Richard Taylor, who is, and I don't know why I had to say your whole name, Richard, Richard Taylor. <laughs> because I, I was using the, the, uh, the Taylor for the, um, uh, right. the actual size of that particular uh, Excel sheet. Yeah, oh, he, man, he, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, he gets full credit. I just get Rick. I'm like, yeah, it's just Rick. It's just him. <laughs> the one and only Rick, though. I mean, so. Oh. So I don't have any questions now, but um, what would you say, you know, Rick or Richard or Robert, you know, when you guys are doing a training on this or have someone who starts using this, is there like a first thing that is always asked or the most frequent thing that somebody might ask when they start using these? I, I'll, I'll ask because I get this question all the time from our customers. How long does it take to get ramped up to speed to, to use this? I mean, both uh, Richard and Robert, you guys have trained more individuals on those software solutions, but what's your ramp up time? Well, I think it depends your, on the... Uh, I think Robert's on mute here. Sorry about that. I think there we go. Sorry, Sorry I had All to right. move that down. Uh, for for markups, ten minutes. They're productive in ten minutes. It's as long as the PDF has been created correctly, it's it's usable. People are productive in ten minutes. I usually set up training sessions for thirty minutes. I've never had one of them go over ten yet. I, well, you know, I'm in marketing and I watched you do that and I feel like I learned how to do it in that short amount of time. So I think absolutely it would be super easy peasy to get going on that. And I think, Richard, you're going to jump in as well. No, I was just saying it depends on the individual ID8 software application, but ID8 Sticky is one of our easiest. I mean, it's really we do almost no training on it whatsoever because it's just so easy. Debbie, you basically just bring up the dialogue, you link in what you need, and then that's it, and it keeps it up to date. So um, it, there's not a whole lot of training involved with that particular one. Right. And, uh, and, and so I guess my question is, so how do, how do we get this in the hands of our customers? Misty? Well, you guys can reach out to us. Um, I've got info at asti.com there for you. We also have, if you've got any questions for ID8, support at id8software.com as well. So we are here for you to get you rolling, get you started. Um, also, if you think of any questions after the webinar that you're like, oh, man, I really should have asked that. I forgot to ask it. You can use the exact same um, emails there. And I'm going to go ahead and throw mine in there as well. 
so you guys have everyone, a plethora of people at your fingertips to help you out, get you rolling. You know, I did the math, Robert. You said that somebody saves up to three minutes per markup and they could do 8,000 markups or something. That's like 400 hours. Ooh. Like that's, that's crazy. Like that's just like a regular. So I was doing the math. So if you guys have want 400 extra hours <laughs> in your life, this is the place. Let's get that happening for you. You'll have more happy hours and more time oh, for that. Oh my goodness. That's right. Yes. And I don't know, are you still seeing my screen or is that something that you can no, share? Can add, yeah, let me add it right here. Okay. So I just wanted to show real quickly that, you know, we were talking about, I, I set that up and it was running. And I think that's when I was having some maybe uh, internet issues. Um, but you'll notice that it actually only took three minutes. It started at 1.32. I'm in Eastern time here. And then this is what was created. So Robert, these are the, you know, you uh, oh, wrong one. This is the one that was created. Um, so here's the, it's like the, the sample sheet set. And so we have column schedule, elevations, framing plans, the title sheet. So let's just go to like the elevations as an example. That was just created now. So this was the PDF of the elevations of that simple sample project, right? Um, that was created. So now, now it could be available for markup. So if you wanted to go to, you know, again, the sections that were created. So it only took three minutes to do all of these and you could schedule it at three in the morning and you can do it on one model, but you, or you could do it on 15 models or 20 models. Um, so it, it's nice that you can set this up and have this run automated in the background. And that runs by itself, right? So the setup of that application there um, of automation mm -hmm. I, is just, it, it's an app that runs by itself, right? So. Correct. And it was a desktop application, and then it's calling the appropriate version of Revit. So it knows basically from, um, you know, the files that I have here, you know, what is the Revit version, as you see here, 2024 or 2023 in this particular case. So that's going to call up the appropriate version, and then we've suppressed many of the pop-ups um, so that it will run, like I said, unattended at 3 in the morning. So I, I got a question for you, Richard. Um, if I'm the project manager and I'm running – ID8 automation on my PC, right? Do mm -hmm. I have to have Revit installed on my computer in order to generate uh, and open up those Revit files and generate the PDFs? Yes, you do. That actually is a requirement. So whatever um, computer you're running ID8 automation on, whether it be your local laptop or maybe even a server of some sort, um, that does have to have Revit as well as um, the okay. ID8 auto automation application. Good to know. Good to know. OK, but I thought since since Rick was talking about that, you know, he went here and he was showing or sorry, Rick, since Robert was talking about that and exporting, I was like, oh, you know we have a way to do that as well. Um, that might be a little bit easier for people. Yeah. And if you look, I mean, again, I mean, you don't have to do it, but you guys, you know, on in Revit world, uh, if you go to manage links, there's no way to figure out what's new, what's current. Yeah. And those specifications that were brought in, if uh, Richard had put in. Uh, live linking, then all we have to do is just send those new ones, replace the old one with the or the new one with the old name. And then whenever uh, Revit is launched, it's automatically going to bring in those latest details. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This is garbage. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. I wouldn't say it's, <laughs> right. it's I don't want to be garbage. bad mouthing Autodesk, but um, I, I think know, we, not... we, we provide a more robust um, more robust view, solution there you view go. into uh, your uh, PDF or your linking documents, whether it be Word, PDF, or Excel. I know. I, I, <laughs> I just no filter today. It's, it's close <laughs> to the weekend. If you're watching this, oh, and by the way, Misty, what if yeah. I know this is being recorded, but um, mm -hmm. let's say someone's watching this and they want a live demo uh, for their office because my friend over here. Uh, my ged says, "Hey, you know what? I want a demo. Can I get a demo of this? Can you guys uh, do a demo for us uh, for our group at another time? How would he do that?" Yeah, so you can reach out to us there um, for our emails. But I think I've also got a link that I can share with you guys. So let me grab that really quickly. 
Uh, yeah, so in other words, I think we would be happy, uh, Richard and, and Robert, myself, we would be happy to do another live demonstration for your company at zero cost. Just reach out to, uh, reach out to us at info at ASTI.com and we'll be happy to uh, do another live demo for, for you and your team.